Shout out to him. How you doing there, Paul? Good to see you in the controls. There he is. I like the beard. What are you doing? Yeah, are you serious, Cup? That's the way to do that. Anyway, nice beard. Post uh, Navy beard. All right. Paul's in there. Anyway, guys, welcome tonight. We're going to have a great time tonight. I mean, we're going to have a great, great time tonight. Zombie apocalypse on an airplane? A zombie airplane apocalypse is going on. We're going to tell you more about that. <clears throat> also, let me just check right now. You know, I've stayed out of this Roy Moore, Doug Jones race. I, it's just such a... I don't even know what to do with it, okay? I don't even know what to do with it. So, But I will let you know. We will check in to see what the totals are right now. And right now, 77% of the vote is in. It's Roy Moore, 50.8%. And Jones, 47.8%. So, wow, it's still a toss-up with 77% of the vote in. We'll check on it later in the broadcast. But right now, I want to go to the word of the Lord. And uh, because we are going to be talking about several things tonight, including NASA's big announcement on they may have discovered another Earth or they're going to they're going to tell us something on Thursday. It's a huge announcement they say is coming. Well, I don't know if they found an Earth, but maybe they maybe they have found some kind of exoplanet. We'll see. But here's what before we go anywhere else tonight. Let's go to the Bible. Let's go because this zombie apocalypse phenomenon that I've been talking about for over five years. It started when Rudy Eugene ate 80% of that guy's face off after he stripped down naked, ran down the streets of Miami carrying a Bible, quoting scriptures, and jumped on a homeless man and ate 80% of his face off. They had to shoot him. They shot him. It didn't, he didn't even stop. He just growled like an animal, and the, the officer had to unload his entire pistol into him to kill him. Ever since that happened, this demonic demon has been manifesting around the country. Well, it's in the Bible, some type of demon called Legion. And so that's why I wrote the book, Zombie Apocalypse, with 35 actual accounts since 2012 documented that you can read each account. And also why I just put out a brand new DVD called Zombie Apocalypse 2. And you can only get both of those items are only at my website. Well, let's go right now to the word of the Lord because this is where the original zombie apocalypse began. A naked man roaming the tombs among the dead. According to Dr. Lester Summerall, eating the fresh flesh of the dead with superhuman strength until he met Jesus Christ. Here we go. Max, read Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. Mark 5. And they came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, what? who had his dwelling among the tombs. And no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces. What? Neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him, and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adore thee by God, that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now there was there nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave. And the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. They were about 2,000 and mm. were choked in the sea. What? And they that fed the swine fled and told it in the city and in the country. And they went out to see what it was that was done. Mm -hmm. And they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. Yeah. And they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil and also concerning the swine. 
and they began to pray him to depart out of their coasts. And when he was come into the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. Howbeit Jesus suffered him not, but saith unto him, Go home to thy friends, and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee, and hath had compassion on thee. I mean, this is such a powerful, such a powerful story. I mean, what a story. And if you go with me to uh, Jerusalem, if you go with Heidi and I to for the 70th year, the, uh, the Israeli tour uh, next year, we're going to be going October the 8th through the 18th. Get your seat reserved. If you're going with me to Israel, we will take you to the Sea of Galilee. We'll go to Tiberias. We'll actually stay a couple of nights in Tiberias because there's a lot to see around the Sea of Galilee area, the Jordan River and the Mount of Temptation and all that. But we'll go to uh, the, the Sea of Galilee. We'll take a boat ride across the Sea of Galilee and I'll show you the area where these tombs are and where it's believed that uh, Legion roamed these tombs, naked, superhuman strength, could not contain him, impossible to deal with, except he had an encounter with Jesus, and that would change everything, I guarantee it. Are you serious? It's great to see everybody here tonight. I want to welcome all of you that are live at my website at paulbigleyprophecy.com, and uh, all of you that are with us on new live stream and Roku Satellite Television. We're so glad you're here. Periscope, you've got hope. That's right, you're with us tonight. Also, we got people listening on the uh, direct radio line. You can get on that line and tell me that we're live and listen live. Just dial the number 605-472-5791. That's 605-472-5791. Then you need the access code. That is 322 322- 656 pound. That's 322 656 pound. And uh, join us on the direct radio line. Also, uh, almost a thousand of you have already joined us at YouTube Live. And we're glad for everyone that watches the archives. Powerful program tonight. Unbelievable stuff we're going to talk about. Uh, but let's get right in to including this big announcement coming up with NASA. This announcement of another planet. Earth, another Earth, possible discovery. We're going to find out on NASA's big announcement Thursday and find out what it is they got for us. But uh, we better worry about this Earth first, guys. And let's go right to the earthquake report because we certainly had a powerful mega quake that hit Iran. That hit Iran uh, this evening. We had a 6.1, 6.2. They downsized it to 6.0. But the earthquakes, earthquakes, shaking and quaking, and the devil's back is breaking, and my mind is aching. We're not faking. Somebody cook up some fried eggs and bacon. I mean, this is, it's, it's happening, guys. Well, listen to this. 2.7 earthquake in California. Very, very shallow. Uh, only 5.4 kilometers. There was also extremely shallow 2.5 earthquake in Puerto Rico of 2.0. And we also had a 2.7 in Puerto Rico, 2.5 in Alaska on the surface of the earth, zero kilometers. I mean, what's that? Just like a few feet? 2.5 earthquakes shaking the very surface of the earth. That is a, um, what? That was in uh, Gustavus, Alaska. Also, we had a 3.9 in Alaska and a 3.1 in New Mexico, only five kilometers deep. We had a 3.4 in Alaska, a 5.9 in Kerman, Iran, in Kerman, Iran. And that one is only 10 kilometers deep. We had a 4.9 in Mexico. Uh, a 2.5 in Alaska, a 4.2 in Iran, and a 3.1 in Lincoln, Montana. That would be in the Yellowstone Danger Zone. That's exactly where that would be as we worry about that super volcano that continues to rumble 
up there. Uh, wow! And also, uh, the Dominican Republic, a 2.9 earthquake, a 4.5 right there in Vanuatu, a 4.8 earthquake in Mexico, and then a 4.3 right there in Indonesia, and a 4.5 in Iran. Then we had a 4.4 over there in Kyakistan, and then a 4.7 way over here in Indonesia, and then here it is, boom, 6.0. It was only 10 kilometers deep. It definitely did some serious shaking there. We got um, preliminary reports, heavy shaking in the area, very heavy shaking, but it's too early. It's on the other side of the world, wrong timeline, I mean, wrong time zones, no indicate, we don't know if there's any damage or any injury. Let's hope not, okay? Now, they also had uh, an, an aftershock real close there at 5.0. And then we see there's been a 4.3 back over here in the Pacific, uh, uh, Pacific Ocean area there in Taiwan. And it was 19 kilometers. And we see a 4.5 back over in Iran. And then we have a 3.0 in Wrangley, Colorado. Wrangley, Colorado, only five kilometers deep, had a 3.0. We had another aftershock in Iran, 4.3. And then a 4.3 in Indonesia. And then a 3.0 in Honey Lake, California, followed by a 4.6 in the central mid-Atlantic Ridge, very shallow, only 10 kilometers, a 4.8 up there in Russia, and a 4.5 over in Chile. So 30 earthquakes in the last 24 hours, a lot of shaking, a lot of quaking, a lot of shallow quakes. Iran's what we're concerned about, but we'll keep a close eye on that. And Yellowstone, okay, and Yellowstone always. Uh, The solar winds are blowing at 469 kilometers per second. And uh, there's been no solar flares. Thank you. We're in a solar minimum. Thank you. I'm so glad for that. But 95 fireballs. What? Goodness gracious. Great balls of fire. I mean, are you serious? Racing across the earth everywhere. 95 of these breaking into the earth's atmosphere. Shaking everything up, folks. Seriously, shaking everything up. Just uh, incredible, really, when you think about it. Um, 95 fireballs breaking through the Earth's atmosphere? That's just insanity. But it's, it's, it's part of what's going on. There's a lot going on in space. Okay, Jesus said there'll be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and the stress of nations with perplexity, the sea, the waves, roaring. And men's hearts had failed them for fear, for looking after those things coming upon the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, he said, look up, lift up your head, for your redemption is drawing nigh. And maybe that's what NASA's doing. They're looking up. They're trying to find out what's going on. But I don't think they're looking for the coming of the Lord necessarily. They're looking for another escape route, maybe another planet. Are you serious? Well, while they're busy doing that, there's an asteroid, asteroid 3200 Fathion, that's going to come by the Earth. It's going to come with it. Nice picture, Paul. It's going to come within uh, 6.2 million miles from the surface of the Earth. Not going to hit us, but it's bringing a ton of debris, a ton of debris. It's called a rock comet even though it's really an asteroid. And the reason they're calling it a rock comet, it's huge. It's five kilometers wide. This thing's like three and a half miles wide. This is a huge. And it's gonna come real close to the sun before coming toward the earth. When he gets real close to the sun, which is what comets do, although this is not classified a comet, but because it is coming close to the sun, the intense heat of the sun will cause a lot of debris, a lot of particles, a lot of fragments that will come flying off of this thing. And then it will become a debris trail following it at enormous speeds. And even though this thing will come, this uh, 3200 Fathion, even though it's going to come within 6.2 million miles of the earth, 
It's the debris field that becomes a potential dangerous situation for planet Earth. So we'll continue to keep a close eye on it. When's it coming by, Pastor? December 17th in 2017. So 12, 17, 17. Actually, 12, 16. Some parts of the Earth, it's going to be December 16th. Some part of the Earth, it'll be December 17th. Just depends where you're at. And we got a global audience out there watching. So heads up on that. Keep your heads up and keep looking up for the Lord is going to return. And by the way, speaking of asteroids, don't get complacent, guys. We've had two asteroids that's going to whiz by us today. One is asteroid 2017 WE13. And another one is uh, asteroid 2017 VS14. Don't worry. One's gonna, the first one's going to miss us by 16.4 lunar distance. The second one's going to miss us by 15.8 lunar distance. All right, so we're going to be okay there. That's for sure. I want to welcome all of you that are with us uh, and just want you to know that we just don't know what's going to happen next, but we're keeping a close eye because the Jesus, Jesus told us. You know, I just got a phone call from a, a man of God down in the Bahamas, and uh, we just had a great little conversation, he and I, for about 10 minutes there just talking about um, the Antichrist, okay, talking about Second Thessalonians chapter 2, talking about the coming of the Lord, uh, talking about the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet. Jesus said, stand in, in the holy place, whosoever reads, let him understand it. We know it talks about it in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, also 2 Thessalonians 2, the Apostle Paul explains it to us. We also know that Zechariah 14, we know that the Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is going to come on the Mount of Olives and split the mountain in half, causing an earthquake that's going to be so powerful in Jerusalem and I believe it's the same earthquake. He did too. It was awesome. In uh, Revelation chapter 11, when the two witnesses are preaching in the streets of Jerusalem, and of course they, uh, an, uh, they die, and an earthquake hits Jerusalem when they wake from the dead. After three and a half days, the two witnesses will rise from the dead. An earthquake will hit Jerusalem, causing the death of 7,000 people. Now that's in the Bible, in the book of Revelation chapter 11. I believe it's the same earthquake that's in Zechariah 14. And that because then Yeshua is, uh, is revealed. It says that Yeshua returns in Zechariah 14. And it would make sense that that's the same quake in Revelation 11. And, uh, and speaking of Jerusalem, you guys, you know, the Arabs are not happy with Donald Trump making the proclamation that Jerusalem is the capital of Israel. And there is some, uh, you know, there's some reaction here and there, but uh, th that will all die down. Just relax. That will finally die down. But we do have some sad news to report. I wasn't aware of it today in my earlier show, but this morning, the mayor of San Francisco, the first ever Asian American to be the mayor of the great city of San Francisco, California, Mayor Ed Lee, died this morning of an apparent massive heart attack. He was brought into the hospital uh, last night. Matter of fact, let me find the uh, report on that if I can. I'm going to try to find it real fast. Give me a second. Here we go, I think. Um, here's what we have. He's, you know, Ed Lee. This is shocking information here that uh, the 65-year-old mayor of San Francisco, but San Francisco Mayor Ed Lee, who became the first, the city's first ever Asian-American mayor when he was named to serve out the remainder of Gavin Newsom's term back in January, of 2011. He has died suddenly early this morning, according to city officials. In accordance with the city charter, then Board of Supervisors, President London Breed became the acting mayor of San Francisco. Effective immediately, Breed becomes San Francisco's first female African American mayor in any capacity. So uh, in a short news release, officials have said that Lee passed away this morning, December 12th at 1.11 a.m. at the Zuckerberg San Francisco General Hospital. 
Family, friends, and colleagues were at his side. Mayor Lee arrived shortly at 10 p.m. He was already in critical condition, said Dr. Susan Ehrlich and the chief executive officer at Zuckerberg's San Francisco General Hospital. We attempted life-saving measures for several hours, but he died at 1.11 a.m. this morning. We expect uh, medical examiners to determine the case of death, um, and all indications would look like that he may have died from a massive heart attack. But we do not know that until the autopsy is over, so we'll uh, wait for that official wording. But uh, Mayor Ed Lee, uh, dead at 65, uh, and so we uh, mourn his death. We pray for the, his family and also for the city of San Francisco tonight as he uh, passes away. There's been, as I said, or let me just check on the uh, election results with the Roy Moore, Doug Jones situation right now. Here's where we're at. 85% of the vote is in. It is Roy Moore, 49.4, Doug Jones, 49. Uh, Jones has 508,671 votes. Moore has 512,829. There's less, there's about 4,000 votes separating them, uh, and over a million votes have been cast. So Doug Jones, Roy Moore in a dead heat down there in Alabama, and uh, interesting situation to say the least. First of all, a Democrat. To, for a Democrat to win that seat in Alabama would be a shock, shocking situation for uh, everyone involved. I mean, President Trump won that state by 28%. It's been a very red state. But uh, we all know the circumstances here with the accusations against Roy Moore and the fact that Mitch McConnell bailed out on him early and took the $30 million he promised to help him with away from him. That, of course, affects a lot of uh, possibilities. But Trump showed up at the last moment, I guess, threw in a little bit of uh, robo calls and a little bit of support toward the end. Uh, we'll see how it all shakes out. Doug Jones may just win this seat um, for the next two years. And so let's just see how it all works out. It's too close to call. We'll come back and study that a little bit later, okay, in the broadcast. But I do want to tell you about something that happened, guys. Uh, I mean, this right here, I'm not shocked by this anymore. I'm just not shocked by it no more. Uh, the zombie apocalypse. But this time, we have a zombie airplane apocalypse. What? I went flying on an aeroplane. Can't find my way around. I can't explain. Zombies in the seats. Zombies on the street. <laughs> Seriously. I'm not. Look, be honest. Get right, get serious. What? A zombie airplane apocalypse happened as a JetBlue flight from Los Angeles, California was flying to New York City to JFK. But on the way there, it got crazy up in there as a man started biting his fellow passengers on this JetBlue Flight. What? Uh, this was, it got, it got, he got, he had like superhuman strength. They couldn't, it took four and five people to, con, to restrain him. He bit people in the seats next to him. He bit the flight attendant. He bit one of the doctors that was trying to help. It got insane. They had to wrestle the man to the ground. Finally, they were able to grab his hands behind his back, held him there while the flight attendants put the restraints on him and said the man who asked only to be identified as Tom said at that point he started yelling and of course uh, and tried to come uh, towards the flight attendants again and he said I really look it was just a bad time there a really bad situation it got real ugly up in there um, it was definitely not the friendly skies okay and and it was, so it wasn't a uh, who has the friendly skies? Is that United? Okay, it wasn't the United, so it wasn't the friendly skies. And it wasn't, Delta's ready when you are, and, and it wasn't a Delta flight. This was a jet blue, all right? And, I, and that might be because you could have turned blue if you'd have seen what was going on 
uh, what you were about to face when you got on that plane. Well, the pilot uh, turned the plane around and landed it in Las Vegas. Good place to drop off a zombie. What? And uh, that's where JetBlue says the customer was escorted uh, off the aircraft uh, and remaining customers then resumed their scheduled flight to New York without any further incident. Now, folks, there was nobody I can understand. Now, some people say the guy's on drugs. It was bath salts or maybe it was, um, you know, maybe it was uh, flaca. You know, we, I've heard all of that. But guys, in my book, Zombie Apocalypse, I write about this. 80% of the zombie apocalypse attacks. He had the guy in Canada that ate his dog in the middle of the street, deboweled his dog with his just you had the you had the police officer in New Jersey, 18-year veteran of the police force, had he had received keys to the city for a great charitable work. One Saturday morning he got up, got out in his squad car with three Bibles stripped down naked and drove to a disabled uh, apartment complex for the disabled. Set out there in the car for a while, got up and went on into the apartment complex and started shoving people over in wheelchairs and then started biting on people. And he started screaming at this one lady and said, I'm going to eat your son. They called the police. The police get there and it's their captain. Absolutely insane, demonically possessed, and it took five officers to restrain him and handcuff him, but it doesn't stop there. They finally get him in the squad car to take him back to the station in the back seat, handcuffed. He kicks out the back window and jumps out of the moving vehicle and takes off running. This, and there's other accounts where people got the same thing. They did the same, they're quoting scripture, there, and one guy strips down naked, runs into a, a house, runs up to the second floor, bit some people in the house, jumped out the second floor window, broke his ankle, but got up and ran anyway, and then attacked a couple people down the street. This is, look guys, it's in my book, Zombie Apocalypse. I, I, I studied everywhere, and, and, and this was a phenomenon. 80% of the time, there was no drugs or, or alcohol involved. 80% of the time, even though the media wanted you to believe that every one of these cases were people strung out on some kind of bath salts or flaca. But in reality, guys, I'm telling you, there, it, look, drugs, uh, the, the, the drugs could be the, you know, the, the oil that puts on the hinges of hell's gate, but what was getting released was not the drugs. The drugs is just the oil, just a little bit of the oil on the hinges that open hell's gates. That's all it does. Just kind of makes the gate swing a little easier. But what comes out of there is a demon-possessed individual. Superhuman strength, superhuman demons, just about like the man in the Bible. Now, now Dr. Lester Sumrall, when, uh, when I was in Jerusalem back in 1996, Dr. Sumrall, who did many exorcisms, said that uh, when he met with several rabbis in discussing this uh, phenomenon that took place there in the days of Jesus, said that the rabbis told him, and now remember, these were orthodox rabbis, so they're not following New Testament. But they knew of the story, of course, of Yeshua and the man called Legion there on the uh, shores of the Sea of Galilee up there in the tombs. And they said that what was going on in that day was that when people die, of course, in Jerusalem, you're not embalmed or not in Israel, you don't get embalmed and you're buried with before the sun goes down the same day. That's just what you do. It's tradition. So they would bury the people and the, the, the rumors were, legend is that this man roamed those tombs because he would go in those tombs and then eat on the fresh flesh of the dead. This is why he lived among the tombs. He was superhuman strength. They, he could break chains. They could not contain him. Now, uh, of course, Jesus, we know I just read it to you, or, or Max just read it to you out of Matthew chapter 5. Jesus had the power to tame the man by casting out the demons when he said, uh, come out of him. And, uh, but, you know, Jesus first asked the demons, what is your name? And they answered, legion, for we are many. 
And of course, Jesus then cast the demons out. The demons begged to stay in the coast because they're what's called territorial demons. And they did, they did not want Jesus to torment them before judgment, before our time, they said. Let us stay here. And so Jesus released them to stay there. But instead of going in a human being, they went into 2,000 hogs that were on the side of the hill. And those hogs ran down a steep hill and jumped into the sea of Galilee. I wonder if those demons then took, uh, took on another creature in the depths of the sea to live there. I can't. Uh, I, look, something's loose, though. Because people are getting this same characteristic, demonic activity going on. So that's why we wrote the book. That's why we did the uh, latest uh, video. You guys know I just did a DVD earlier this fall called Zombie Apocalypse 2. And in that, I sit down with Ellie Marzulli in California and interview him about this demonic uh, craze, this phase of these zombies. This airplane situation would be a prime example. Good thing L.A. wasn't on that L.A. flight. What? But because um, uh, he probably would have cast the demons out of that guy. All right. But anyway, uh, I talked to L.A. about it. You can watch the DVD. It's a fascinating interview about the zombie apocalypse phenomenon and, and demonic possession. And he tied it to the Nephilims. And he, and he brought in the cannibalism and, and all the different things that went on in the times of Nimrod and the Nephilims and the, uh, uh, the different uh, tribes that were in the Holy Land at that time. So he tied, it's, a, it's a great interview. You need to check it out. Uh, let me just tell you what else is going on, though. The good news is they got the guy off the plane. I don't know what happened to him or where he's at, but uh, he needs our prayers. I'll say that. And the people got to where they were going. But uh, very, very, very fascinating situation. I want to welcome all 1,300 of you that are with us live at YouTube, plus there's many hundreds of you everywhere else. Let me just check on the, uh, the uh, statistics of the race in Alabama quickly. 87% of the vote is in, and it is Roy Moore, 49.2, and Doug Jones, 49.2, in a dead heat, separated by just... A very few votes with 13% to go. So we'll keep a close eye on what's going on there. Down in Alabama, that sounds like a recount. And that could just make the circus keep going. You, I, aren't you tired of hearing about it? I mean, I, I feel sorry for the people of Alabama. They must be sick and tired of hearing about this. And if this thing ends up so close that it's too close to call and they got to do a recount, then here we go again. You guys will spend uh, your holidays watching uh, and listening to the mainstream, lamestream, fake news media continue to go on. The circus, you know, I mean, the circus, the circus, the circus. Oh, oh my Lord. All right. Anyway, let me tell you what else is going on. Uh, uh, we've got a situation here. Um, sorry about that. Sorry, I I'm, I'm lost my place there. Oh, guys, did you hear about this? Uh, Hewlett Packard, Hewlett Packard, uh, they, what is going on? I guess thousands of laptop computers had key logging software put in them secretly. Uh, this is an unbelievable story just now breaking. I don't know if you have a Hewlett, I have an, I have an Apple. Uh, I don't know if we got a Hewlett Packard in there. Do you got a Hewlett Packard, Paul? Is that what you got? Is there any Hewlett Packards in there? We don't have any Hewlett Packers, do we? All right. Some of you out there may have a Hewlett Packard uh, uh, computer, but check this out. As soon as I find it, um, here we go. According to reports, uh, Russia Today has just done a, uh, a breaking news here. Uh, and Russia Today has just announced Doug Jones has just upset Roy Moore in the Alabama Senate race. So the there you see it. The Associated Press is uh, declaring that um, there it is. Democrat Doug Jones has upset Roy Moore in Alabama Senate race. But I just went to Fox News and it's a dead heat tie with thirteen 
percent to go. So, okay, we'll see what goes on. The media spin is already beginning. Anyway, hundreds of Hewlett Packard laptop models found to have hidden key logging software. What? Uh, here's what we got, folks. A security researcher has revealed that some Hewlett Packard laptops uh, have hidden software which can log everywhere, excuse me, can log everything typed on its keypads. More than 460 models have been affected dating back to the year 2012, according to a list released by Hewlett Packard. The discovery was made by a researcher, Michael Ming, who found the key logging code in a pre-installed uh, syn synaptics. Is am I saying that word right? Synaptics? Synaptics? Okay, I think I'm close. A synaptics touchpad software on Hewlett Packard laptops. Key loggers record every key that is pressed on the keyboard. So that means this HP laptop users are at risk of having their passwords, their bank details, their private communications, and their search history recorded without their knowledge. The key logger is disabled by default, but there's a risk it can be enabled again by a hacker. So according to uh, Russia Today in a tweet, keyboard app security GAF exposes 31 million users data, including passwords, web searches, and everything else. Now, Ming, who is known online as ZW Close, uh, learned about the keylogger when he was examining the Synaptics touchpad software to find out how to control the keyboard uh, backlight. Ming has issued a software patch to remove the keylogger, and Hewlett Packard has released a driver update for the affected laptops. Hewlett Packard says neither the company nor the Synaptics had access to the files, but that it was built into the Synaptic software to help debug errors. But Hewlett Packard uses Synaptics touchpads in some of its models, its PCs, and has worked with Synaptics to provide fixes to their error for the impacted Hewlett Packard systems available via the security bulletin of Hewlett Packard or HP.com. Uh, the company provided a list of models affected, and this is the second keylogger code found in a Hewlett Packard laptops this year. In May, Swiss security firm ModZero discovered a keylogger built in a Hewlett Packard audio driver. So also this year, the company has found to have installed soft, uh, spyware applications on their Windows 10 computers following a November update. Users be began noting a Hewlett Packard Touchpoint uh, uh, analytics client was installed and uploading information to Hewlett Packard servers. All right. So there you are, guys. I mean, are you serious? You just don't know. You look, folks, look, here's what, can I just say something? It doesn't matter if it's cyber world or down the street, you put a lock on your door, you close your windows at night, and you, you better have the protection of God's divine angels, okay? God's divine angels. Because at the end of the day, I don't care if it's your car, your, 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 uh, your home, your computer, whatever it is you're doing, your tools in the shed, your lawnmower, you know, I don't care what it is. You need to start trust. You can't trust man. You can't even trust the security systems that you may have installed for your home and the camera systems or whatever else you got. You got to put your faith in Jesus Christ. The end time church has to have, you need to know how to plead the blood of Jesus over your home. You need to know how to plead the blood of Christ over your life. Put your faith in the Lord and not in man. Lean, the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge the Lord and he will direct your path. I think that's Psalms chapter three, verses five and six. It might be Proverbs chapter three, verses five and six, but certainly 
You want to be sure your faith should not, st- Paul said, your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. See, it's not by our might nor by our power, but by his spirit, thus saith the Lord. And if the enemies come against you one way, the spirit of God will send them running in seven different directions. So that goes for your online. It goes for everything you do. Put your faith in God. Plead the blood of Jesus. Pray Psalms 91 over your family. See, you're blessed and highly favored. And I just want to say this. And those of you that are members of this online church, and those of you who are partners of Paul Begley Prophecy, uh, we've, already, we've been praying this. We've been believing God. We've been trusting God. I'm getting letters now from the last two weeks where people gave offerings, believing God for the divine protection, believing God for the favor Believing God that they're blessed and highly favored and, and, and praising the Lord. And they're already having breakthroughs, already having uh, uh, economic turnarounds. Businesses have increased. People got their inheritance that they've been trying to get for three years. Folks are getting healed. Listen, it, it means something to be blessed and highly favored of God. And you're sowing into fertile ground. You know, the Bible tells you that, uh, you know, you can cast the word of God. You can put it in stony ground. You can put it in uh, grounds that's got thickets and thorns. You can, uh, uh, you know, the seed, the word of God, your faith that you have in the word. But boy, you want to put it in uh, good ground. You, some of it can land on rocks. It springs up but then because it lacks moisture. It just withers away. And Jesus even said, don't, don't be casting your pearls before the swine. So he's telling you, look, get, get where God is moving. Get where there's a harvest. Get where people are coming together in the power of God. Walk in the anointing. Jesus, the Bible says in the book of Deuteronomy, I'll make you the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. You're blessed going in, blessed going out, blessed in the city, blessed in the field. So put all your faith in the Lord. Somebody give somebody a high five. And tell him, that's right, that's what I'm talking about. Now he's preaching. Because I tell you what, if God be for you, who can be against you? Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Paul said, the Lord said he'd make you a conqueror, more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus that will strengthen you. He said he'd supply every need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. All right? So, I mean, this is, I'm talking about, I don't know about you, I understand that, that my name has been written in the Lamb's book of life. And so now I'm a child of God. I'm an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. In these last days, the latter day church will have to walk by faith. We can't be scared. We can't run around hiding in a hole somewhere. We can't be just with a bucket of beans and hoping it works out. You got to get your faith. You got to get on the front line. You got to be a part of the end time harvest. The Great Commission didn't end just because uh, uh, 75% of the church world is scared to death and only want to open the Bible and look at the book of Revelation. No, uh, publicly school of prophecy, we are training leaders for the end time harvest. Read the book of Joel. Read what it says. Yes, there, the, the sun will be darkened. It says there'll be blood and fire and vapor of smoke and the sun will be turned to darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. But he also said, I will pour out the rain, the former rain, the latter rain in the first month. Okay, and the reapers will overtake the sower. So no, 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 you can know this. We're not gonna crawl into heaven, but we're gonna go blazing in through the gates because we've been saved by grace through faith. So we understand who we are in Christ Jesus. Hang on a second. Let me tell you something else going on here. There was a blast. There was a blast in uh, Gaza. Matter of fact, over at the Crusader Journal, over at the Crusader Journal, Bart Begley's got an article just come out today. Two people are dead in a Gaza blast. Now, Israeli military is denying that it carried out this attack. Israel's saying, we did not do this. Uh, But two Palestinian Islamic Jihad militants riding on a motorcycle in Gaza were killed in an explosion today, which the group implied was caused by an accidental detonation during preparations for an attack 
on Israel. Israeli military denied any accounts by local residents that the militants were killed in an airstrike. Israel said, nope, we did not do it. If we do it, we'll tell you we did it. We're not ashamed to tell you. We'll, ca- we'll flat tell you if we do it. And if we do it, probably be more than two dead. But violence along the Israeli-Gaza border has flared since U.S. President Donald Trump's recognition last week of Jerusalem as Israel's capital. And the Israeli military demo- uh, demolished uh, the uh, Sunday of a cross-border tunnel it said was dug up by Hamas, the Islamic group that controls the small coastal enclave. On Monday, Israel's Iron Dome anti-missile system intercepted a rocket fired by militants in Gaza. And shortly afterward, Israel reported with tank fire and airstrikes targeting positions of Hamas. In a statement after Tuesday's explosion, Islamic Jihad said, we mourn the men, the martyrs of preparation. And the group usually employs the term to refer to casualties caused by the accidental detonation of weapons or explosives used in any attack against Israel. Shh, it's radical Islam. We're not supposed to say that, okay? It's not politically correct in this country. Um, So anyway, that's what's going on there. We'll watch this. You know, look, look, you got a situation where tomorrow Turkey's president, Erdogan has called a Islamic summit to deal with Jerusalem. And he's asking leaders from all the Islamic nations to come and be with him. Now I'm hearing that very few, if any, are showing up. They don't want this guy to be in the face of Islam. They don't want him thinking he's going to be the caliphate, that he, I mean, the caliph, that he's going to lead the caliphate to Jerusalem. But Walid Shubat, which I've had on my show a couple times, he's been on Fox News, he's been on CNN, he's been on several different major networks. Of course, they threw him off because he told the truth. But uh, he was on our show and he said his number one suspect to be the Antichrist is Erdogan of Turkey. That's who he believes has the best shot right now of who could be the Antichrist. Of course, nobody knows who the Antichrist is because the, the third temple hasn't been built yet. It hasn't been revealed yet. You can read 2 Thessalonians 2, but certainly uh, Erdogan may be in the team picture. Now, having said that, we got more information here I want to go to. Uh, we're going to check on um, in just a second if I can find what I was going to look for. Oh, NASA. But before I go to NASA, let's check this real quick. What is the uh, statistics now on the report? Uh, Doug Jones wins. 89% of the vote is in. Fox News says Doug Jones has 49.6% of the vote. Roy Moore has 48.8% with 89% of the votes in. But it has been declared Doug Jones wins the Alabama Senate seat uh, in a Close, and I mean a close call here. There's still 11% of the vote to be counted, but apparently those are in strong Democratic districts. And so they know Jones is going to win this thing. So that's amazing. I think this has been a long time since a Democrat has won a Senate seat, uh, this Senate seat specifically in Alabama. But uh, the political winds have changed. uh, And... uh, so there has been a victory for Doug Jones. And we'll find out what the final, now just, just so you know, when there's 11% left, I think you probably should wait till a little bit more of the votes are counted, but they pretty well know based on those districts. So uh, we'll wait and see what the talking heads want to say now. Uh, they, uh, what does this mean going forward? Well, it just means the Senate just went from 50 what is it? 51 to 49 or is it 52, 48? What is it? Do you know, Paul? Uh, It's going to make it, must be going to make it 40, 51, 49. So the Republicans would have 51 and the Democrats 49. That's why millions and millions of dollars were spent on this seat. And uh, we'll see. Jones will hold it for at least two years. 
and then we'll see if he then gets defeated by a stronger Republican candidate, probably one that isn't as flawed as uh, Roy Moore. Okay, well, anyway, that's what the uh, election news. But we've got a bigger announcement maybe coming up Thursday. NASA. What? NASA. Uh, According to reports, NASA is going to make a major announcement Thursday, uh, and they might be going to announce another earth. I mean, this, when I got this information this morning, I just said no. And then I've been doing some more research and NASA is going to make an announcement of maybe finding another earth, an exoplanet that is similar to earth, that it would actually be able to inhabit life. It would be more uh, receptacle to life than Mars is. Now, this is what I'm hearing. This may be an, a NASA announcement. They're going to make a major announcement Thursday of, a, of another Earth possible discovery. We'll see. But, uh, I mean, what? Are you serious? Well, let me tell you what it says here. Uh, NASA is holding a major press conference after its planet hunting telescope made a new breakthrough. The Kepler Space Telescope is operated by NASA to discover other Earths some of which could support life. And its latest discovery is significant enough to bring, it, bring with it a huge press conference. Very little further information was given about this announcement, which will take place Thursday, but it will almost certainly relate to an exoplanet. Now, right, you, right there, Paul is showing you that is the Kepler satellite. That thing was launched from Earth back in 2009. It's been out there eight years going into deep, deep, deep space. And it is um, uh, equipped with an incredibly powerful telescope on it. Very little further information has been revealed, but we're going to wait for Thursday. It will almost certainly relate to exoplanets. Earth-sized worlds that orbit around their own star or sun and are, and are the best hope of finding alien life. Now, that doesn't mean, you know, uh, E.T., phone, home. I mean, it doesn't mean that, but, but, it, but it means there could be some kind of life form, whether it be plants or microorganisms. There could be water. They certainly believe there could be water. Um, Space Agency said that the discovery was made with the help of Google AI. Here we go with the AIs again. Artificial intelligence. Remember what I said this morning. They're coming out with an AI God. They're going to make it an AI Messiah. And the guy, what's his name? Uh, Anthony Lewandowski. He used to work for Google. He used to work for Uber. He is an engineer. Well, he is building this AI robot. He's already declared a religion called the way of truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Well, this AI uh, religion is going to be called the way of truth. Uh, This is blasphemous. This is it right out of the pages of Revelation 13. Unbelievable. I can't believe I'm having this discussion right now. I can't believe I'm discussing about uh, AI Messiah, but the Bible says that there's going to be an image made like the Antichrist and the image can speak and can cause as many as don't worship the Antichrist to be put to death. And you cap, you have to have the mark of the beast. And so a lot of people don't understand they're freaking out over currencies. They're freaking out over technologies. They're freaking out over all kinds of things. It, this is a spiritual thing, folks. Yes, technologies play a part. I mean, they're, they're going to be used. That's why I wrote the book, Mark of the Beast, RFID. They're going to use, there's going to be technological things involved in the Mark of the Beast. But ultimately, it is about the blasphemy of God, blaspheming his name, blaspheming the Holy Ghost, blaspheming Jesus Christ, blaspheming the body of Christ, blaspheming the plan of salvation. And they're going to use high-tech technology to do it. 
demonically inspired, demonically charged, as Russ Dizdar says. Now listen to this. NASA said that four engineers and scientists will take part in this session. They include Paul Hertz, who leads NASA's astrophysicist division. A senior Google software engineer will be in the press conference and two other scientists. The Kepler telescope was launched back in 2009 when scientists didn't know how many exoplanets there were. It was shown that they were surprisingly common, indicating that each star might have its own planet. And uh, in completed its main mission in 2012, but has continued to do more work in 2014, it became a major mission called K2, which looks for more exoplanets as well as studying other cosmic phenomenon. Look at that. There's Paul. That's a great, great uh, chart there, a great graphic. Check this out, folks. The Hubble telescope, then the Spitzer, then the Kepler. Since then, look at these. The TESS and the Webb. And the W first all have been launched since the Kepler, but it's the Kepler that was launched in 2009. That's now ready to give us this discovery of potentially a new earth. And we've got three other evolutions of telescopes, satellite telescopes that are going to go even further, have stronger telescope lenses and will go where no man has gone before, all right? So the Bible says that men will climb into the heavens. Remember, Nimrod tried to do that with the tower, but uh, he failed when God confused his language. So this is where we're at, folks. We're in a different world now, okay? We're in a different world now where the, we're understanding we're in the end times. There will be signs in the sun and in the moon. And in the stars, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea, the waves will be roaring and men's hearts will fail them for fear. Looking after those things coming upon the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. So we're in a different world. We're in a different time. We're in the end times. We're artificial intelligence. We're uh, different types of technologies. Now we're finding out uh, we just got just got news. Doug Jones is now speaking, but uh, he won at 98 percent of the vote is in. Doug Jones got 49.5 percent of the vote. Roy Moore got 48.8. And so uh, Doug Jones is going to become the newest senator in the United States of America. Uh, we're in a different time. We're in a different era. We're in a different situation. Doug Jones will go to the Senate uh, with, the, uh, with, of course, his uh, liberal view on all the other things, as you already know. Uh, it just tightens the thing even more in the Senate to 51-49. You talk about fighting and scratching. Now, Trump is going to even have harder times uh, getting like the tax bills and, and different things through. Obamacare, different things. I mean, it's so razor close. So, you know, all the... All it takes now is Lindsey Graham and uh, John McCain to have a bad hair day, uh, Susan Collins to, uh, and, and you know, nothing gets done. And so uh, uh, this is why you need to pray for the president, pray for our country, pray that the Congress, you know, I really would like to see a bipartisan approach to get things done for this country. I really would. Uh, I really would. I really, really would work, work for the betterment of the people. And not all this mud slinging and all of this and finger pointing and we're tired. I, I just want you to know the American public is tired. Can we get, can we all get along? I mean, can we get together and fix it? The swamp, I know the swamp needs drained. I mean, the swamp, drain the swamp, pull the plug on them. The slippery, slimy slope, the sleaze, the cesspool of sin called the, are you serious? It's the swamp. Oh, it's slouch, it's slushy and sleazy and the sewage, and it just, it's a swamp. What? Well, anyway, 
Drain it, drain it. You need barrels of Drano. You need barrels, truckloads, pulling up huge hoses of Drano, big plungers and router rooters and snakes and all kinds of stuff to drain this thing. It is a cesspool. It is a cesspool. It is a sleazy, slippery slope. The swamp is a cesspool. And man, does it need drained. But then we need some cooperation. Could we get it? Can we get it? Well, let's pray for our country, okay? Let's pray for our country because this is, uh, it needs it. Now, think about this. If man, if the Bible says men will climb into the heavens, if we tried it before with Nimrod and God had to confound our languages to stop us, how close are we now? to God saying to Jesus, you know what? It's over. I want you to go get the bride. They're up here. They're floating around up in space. They're talking about trying to build a colony. They're going to build a, they're going to build a robot that they're going to worship. And that thing, what if it decides that you need to die? You're too sick. What if euthanasia is decided by the AI? Then everybody can say, well, the AI said it. The AI knows what's best for the greater good. The AI knows that we should eliminate those who can't pull their own weight. Or in my case, is a little overweight. Uh, or maybe they don't like who I am. Hey, I'm too conservative or I'm too, you know, you know. All right. So are you serious? How far are we going to go? Here's what the Bible says. The Lord will shorten the days for the elect's sake. Least there be no flesh saved. We're getting close. We're getting real close. I'm going to ask you a question tonight. And I tell you, we've had a great time here. We've had a great crowd of folks here. I mean, great Christians are here. A lot of wonderful people are here. And there's folks here that good folks are here who aren't saved. And you're concerned about the country. I'm concerned about the country. I'm concerned about our world we live in. But my faith isn't in a man or a politician or a political party or, or something else. My, my faith is in the Lord Jesus Christ. I know he won't fail me. I know he'll be with me all the way, even to the end of the world. And we're going to play a song tonight. And we're going to give you an opportunity to make the greatest decision of your life. We're going to, we're going to listen, it, the Bible says, for God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. As Paul gets us a song, if you'd like to be saved, you can type right now in the chat rooms, Periscope, New Live Stream, Paul Begley Prophecy, YouTube. You can type, I want to be saved. Our wonderful moderators will help scour the, the websites the, the chat rooms, to look for people who's typing, I want to be saved. Get your name. Get your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Pastor Begley can't save you, but I can help you, lead you to the cross. And we'll pray, and you can repeat after me, or you can pray yourself. Right now, right now, if you want to be saved, give your life to Jesus Christ. Come right now, in Jesus' name. Come right now. This is the moment. Yes, Lord. This is your day. I okay, hang on. Almost let go. I felt like I just couldn't take life anymore. My problems had me bow. Just that's a way. Depression weighed me down, but God held me close. Jacob so I and Carrie God Johnson want to be saved. Me. Praise God. So I wouldn't let go. Also, Trey I wants to be saved. And Mutt, 2236. I was right on the edge of a break. Praise God. I couldn't see it. 
There's others. You can do this. You can do this. Ron Stoppable wants to be saved. Church pray. There's some folks here that are really, really serious about their soul. Pray for them. Pray right now. I need my intercessors. In the name of Jesus, break, break, break the chain. Sean is rededicating at Periscope. Glory. You can do this. God's mercy kept me. Also, so I wouldn't let Nicotina. Go. Nicotina wants to be saved. Praise God. Also, Colin I wants to be saved. How many others? How many go. more? How many more? What about you? Periscope. I felt like a New live stream. David wants to be saved. Daga wants to be saved. Daga. Thank you, Lord. God help me close. So I wouldn't let go. Oh, Jesus, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Set them free, Lord. Set them free, Lord. Tonight's the night. Tonight's the night. I'm not looking for another earth. I'm not looking for a hole in the ground. I'm looking for a home in the sky. This is your moment. Save. Campbell wants to be saved. Praise the Lord. And Seneca Crow wants to be saved. Praise God. Sage Campbell and Seneca Crow. So I wouldn't let go. Paul, I think we should play that same song over again, if you can. And, and, and as the Lord is speaking to hearts, as we're taking our moment of time to give you the greatest opportunity in history to become a born-again believer. You see, if you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, you're halfway there. Okay, you get rid of all the other religions and... and, and you know, the Dalai Lama, Muhammad, Hare Krishna, Buddha. Let's put all that aside. If you believe, if you had to put all your life on the line and had to choose who the Messiah was, you're saying Jesus, then you're halfway there. Now, are you willing to repent and give him your life? Ron Stoppable is crying to for to be saved and his family. How many people's in his family? Sure, we'll pray with all of them. So I wouldn't let go. I almost gave up. I was right on the edge of a breakthrough, but couldn't see it. The devil really had me, but Jesus came and he grabbed me. And Daga's friend Bach wants to be saved. Oh, so praise God. Go. Come on, you can do it. I've got 12 names right now. God How many are in uh, Ron Stoppable's family? So I wouldn't let go. This is the moment. This is the hour. So Call upon the name of Jesus. Church pray. Break, 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 break the chains. I'm alive today because of his grace. Oh, we can be close. Jacob wants to be saved. Carrie Johnson wants to be saved. Now Kim Johnson wants to be saved. Praise God. Trey wants to be saved. Mutt2236 
wants to be saved. Ron Stoppable wants to be saved. Nati Natio Tina wants to be saved. Colin wants to be saved. David wants to be saved. Daga wants to be saved. Sage Campbell wants to be saved. Seneca Crow wants to be saved. Bach wants to be saved. And Kim Johnson wants to be saved. What about you? What about you? What about you? This is the moment. This is the hour. This is the day. Today is the day of salvation. God's mercy kept me so I wouldn't let go. I'm alive because of his grace. We're getting ready to pray. So I wouldn't let go. Joshua Davis wants to be saved. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Setting the captives free. Also, Andy Briars. Andy Briars wants to be saved. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I got 15 names. Also, run to salvation wants to be saved. Praise God. Amen. This is the salvation station. Uh, Bacchus. I think that's the same as Bach. Is that the same person or is there? Help me out here. Uh, but we're going to pray with these folks. We're going to pray in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to be saved. I want to be born again. I want to be washed in the blood of the lamb. I'm repenting of my sins. I'm confessing my sins to God. And I'm asking Jesus Christ to come into my life, to come into my heart, to come into my soul and save me. Wash me in your precious blood, Lord. Clean me up. Take away the guilt. Take away the pain, take away all the sin and the shame and come into my life and set me free. Break, break the chains. Release me from anything and everything that would be damning my soul and take it away from me. Release me tonight. I want to be set free and all demon forces and demonic influences and all sin I want it released from my life and I'm, I plead the blood of Jesus Christ and I call upon the name of Yeshua as the Messiah because I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe and I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins, that Jesus rose from the dead, that he ascended into heaven and that he's coming back again soon and very soon. And I want to be ready. So right here, right now, by faith in God's grace, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name, I am saved, 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 healed, delivered, set free, born again, saved in Jesus precious name. Are you serious? Welcome to the family. What? <laughs> wow. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Somebody shout. When I first found this holiness way, all my night was turned to day. When my friends don't understand, Oh, while I'm singing to clap my hands, I clap my hands and clap my hands. Oh, everybody ought to clap your hands. Well, clap your hands, clap your hands. Everybody clap your hands. Well, clap your hands, clap your hands. 
Yeah. Look the devil in the eye and clap your hand. Clap your hand, clap your hand. Oh, everybody ought to clap your hand. When the enemy comes like a flood. Yeah! You let him know your change your stand. I'm not gonna worry, gonna clap my hands. Clap your hands, clap your hands. Oh, Somebody! Oh, everybody ought to clap your hands. Come on, Kevin. Yeah! All the angels are rejoicing. Give somebody a high five right now. We have a trooper has been shot. We'll tell you about in a moment. He's defeated. In the name of Jesus, that devil's got to go. Are you serious? Are you serious? Oh, yes. Welcome tonight to the coming apocalypse. 16 salvations here tonight, and we're just having a good time in the Lord. Really, we really are. Guys, let me tell you something. We have breaking news. There's a, 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 a Indiana State Police Trooper has been shot in the head during a high-speed chase in Jeffersonville, Indiana. Now, we know right where that is, right across the river from Louisville, Kentucky. The shooting occurred around 7 o'clock this evening at the East Park Place and Main Street in Jeffersonville, which is located in Clark County along the Ohio River. The incident began as a traffic stop, which led to a chase the trooper was grazed in the head. That's good. According to Indiana State Police, and was alert and conscious. Oh, thank you, Jesus. While en route to the University Hospital in Louisville, his injuries are not expected to be life-threatening, and sources at the scene say the trooper returned fire and hit the suspect, who has then taken into custody. So that's some good news that the uh, officer has not been killed and that the uh, suspect's not been killed. And get them off the road, and let's get this figured out, okay? So, thanks for that update. Guys, I want to say, welcome to the family, okay? Welcome to the family of God. I'm so proud of you getting saved. Uh, this is a beautiful thing that's happened, and we're just excited for you. All right, we really are. And welcome to the family. Your names have been written in the Lamb's Book of Life. The angels are rejoicing in heaven and they're doing cartwheels and flip-flops and, and, and just <laughs> they're enjoying themselves uh, in glory. And I want to encourage you. I want to say to you, you know, you just got born again. It's the best decision you ever made in your life. We love you tonight. We really, truly do. You know, we want to encourage you to get baptized, to find a pastor, to find a church somewhere in a community where you live. Tell me you got saved. And if you uh, need help in finding a church or a Messianic congregation or a uh, uh, a pastor, you can send an email to converts.2016 at gmail.com. That's converts.2016 at gmail.com. And if you need a Bible, we'll send it to you for free and we'll pay the postage. All right. We want to get it to you. Same thing with the anointed prayer cloths. Now you just send an email to Miss ZD01 at hotmail.com. That's Miss ZD01 at hotmail.com. She's in the chat room tonight. Thank you, Robo Mom. Uh, uh, thank you. Amen. For all of our moderators working hard again tonight, we want to encourage them and encourage all of you. Praise the Lord. Amen. And let me just say that uh, look, 
We want to get these. If, if, if someone might be real sick, really, really, really ill, we need to get a blanket to them. We'll anoint it with oil in the name of the Lord and send that to them as well. Okay. And there may be uh, someone out there that uh, blanket and also may need a chemo cap, <clears throat> a chemo cap. We'll anoint those with oil in the name of the Lord as well. And, uh, and we, we couldn't do this without our faithful partners of Paul Begley Prophecy Ministries. Every one of you making such a difference in the kingdom of God. You know, Billy Night Train is here. He would tell you to hit the easy button. And if you'd like to give and be, look, become a strong supporter, a strong partner of Paul Begley Prophecy Ministries. Be a part of the end time harvest. Help get the lost to Christ. This is the salvation station. Uh, I forgot how many people were saved today in the, I think there were seven today and 16 tonight. And God is adding to the church daily, such as should be saved. The hearts are being touched. Lives are being changed. Thousands of people are receiving the powerful anointed word of God. And we're encouraged. People are being healed and we're just in, and we're in love with, you know what? We have the love of God. That's what it is. We're a family and we love one another. Sister Heidi and I working very hard as well to try to communicate and, and respond back and, and pray for all of the needs of the people. And if you're giving tonight, you can put a prayer request or a praise report right there in the uh, note as you're giving online. If you're watching us on YouTube, some folks at YouTube say, how do I give? I want to give. I really want to give and bless this ministry and keep it strong and moving and winning souls to Christ. Just go to my website if you would. They may put the link right there in the chat room for you if you're at YouTube. But certainly if you'll come to our website, you can hit the donate button and give whatever the Lord lays on your heart. Some of you may want to get in the, in the kingdom blessing. Get in the kingdom blessing. Be blessed and highly favored. Start giving to the work of God and watch what God would do. You can't outgive God. My dad says it all the time. You just can't outgive God. And I'll say it this way. I'd rather have 90 cents with God than a dollar with the devil. I'll tell you that much. So uh, I put my trust in the Lord and I want you to do the same and be blessed. Amen. Uh, let me encourage you as well. Uh, there's a, what was I going to say? Oh, my mind just, uh, I must be tired. I must be tired. Praise God. Wow. It was something good too. All right. But uh, praise the Lord for you. We love you. We want to encourage you tonight. If you'd like to write us, that's what it is. Paul knows what it is. There's my address right on the screen. Just write me at Paul Begley Prophecy. You might want to send a check or money order in the mail. You might want to write me a letter or maybe you have a prophecy you want to give me or a prophetic insight. Maybe even uh, you've had a prophetic dream. Uh, just to, or you have a prayer request, a praise report, just write me at Paul Begley Prophecy. That's Paul Begley Prophecy 1048-B. That's 1048-B. 1048-B, Sagamore Parkway West. That's Sagamore Parkway West, Box 33. That's Box 33, Box 33, West Lafayette, Indiana. This is West Lafayette, Indiana. And the zip code is 47. 906. That's 47906. Well, we've had a great time tonight. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it was enlightening. I hope it was fun. And I hope we had a great time. And we praise God for these people who are saved. And I want to thank all of you for coming. A great crowd here tonight. Thank you. Oh, I'm going to be uh, filling in for uh, with the Hagmans. And I'll let you know when. Coming up here soon. Um, so I'll let you know. Okay, uh, they sent me an email and asked me and uh, uh, there's a two or three days they might want me to come in and help them out during the uh, during this period of time. Uh, so uh, we'll let you know when that happens. Okay. Also, we our schedule. I'm going to be getting on uh, getting all of this to Mike Childers to get my event schedule put together. Man, it is stacking up for next year. And I, I was really just wanting to kind of stay home, you know, but uh, no, God says, no, no, no. You got some people to meet. Got to go preach in New York City, preach in California. I'm going to preach in Washington State. Got to preach in Florida. We got to preach in uh, Texas. I got to preach in Michigan. I got to preach in New York City, uh, uh, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Indiana. It is going to be a busy year. No doubt about that. All right. God bless you. All right. Well, Paul. 
Thank you so much for doing a great job, Paul Begley, producing today's broadcast. There he is again, folks, the main man. That's right. He's got his dad's looks and his mom's looks and brains. Okay, so don't have anything of his dad, really. It's just It's really all about his mom. She's got the beauty and the brains, and I'm just the guy over here. What? Are you serious? That's, that's it. Okay, that's it. I'll see you guys tomorrow at 10 at 12 noon. Get up early. I'll, I'll get up.